I don't know, I think I might dye my hair sometime. You should go red. Yeah, I was thinking like a darker red. Yeah. Yeah, a reddish brown. Like a maroon? Yeah, oh. like reddish brown. All right, we're going to work on our looping structures today, um, and we're, we're going to work on particularly on um, some particular types of loops. I'm trying to get my eclipse up. I'm going to New York City on the third hand. That's going to be so much fun. Any of you guys going to NYC? I see. I went last year. I saw three different Broadway shows. What? The school, there's the college shrub. Yeah, there's one from New York City. Hustle Paris. Yeah, I'm not going to Paris. Unless I can get like a scholarship for it. Yeah, no, I'm not going to Paris otherwise. Alright, I'm, I'm putting a space on Blackboard to upload. Um, what we work on in class today, just to let you know, it's there right now, okay. in the in class in, in class stuff. But I have, I have no attached file with it. Um, let me pull back here. All right. So we have been talking about looping, and you know, we're working our way towards methods. Um, what I want want to do right now is we're going to use some loops to build some programs. Um, and what I want to do is kind of a guessing game, a high-low guessing game, um, which would be good for a loop structure, right? You pick some random number, are you close to it? Um, and so let's say we pick some number between 1 and 1,000. I guess 50. A computer says, hey, you're too low. Guess something else. We want to loop until you get the correct number. So th that's going to be... Uh, the object that we go for here. Um, let me um, make sure my displays are displaying and my non displays are non displaying. Why is my eclipse not showing? It's there. It's there. Interesting. Uh, I'm there. Table pad. Johnny. Let's go here. Okay, that one's good. Interesting. That was a case of shut it down and turn it back on again to make it work. The old unplug it, plug it back in. Yep. All right. Um. So, and let me get video link here. Okay, there's one. Hopefully we'll get two. All right, so I want, we're gonna list the things we're going to need to do here, and then in we'll make a new class. So I haven't even made my new class yet. Um, so this is just sitting on a previous thing that was in here. Um, but what we want to think about is, so we're going to do a guessing game. Um, and I, I actually, um, I want to play more than once. So um, I want to keep score. Um, I see the guessing game. What's the best score? The lowest number of tries? Right. If I'm guessing, I want to guess in the least oh, number. Of oh, I, I, no, I'm just... If I'm going to record a number for a score, it's going to be I got it in three versus I got it in five. Right? So um, we'll want some place for um, the lowest... Um, number of guesses. Mm -hmm. right, that's not a bad variable to have, right? Um, we're definitely going to need our scanner object to get user input. And 
And um, let's see. Um, we're going to need a loop that asks, do you want to play? Right? Do you want to play again? Yeah. Is that kind of? Right? So we'll have some big container. Do you want to play again? And we keep saying yes or no for it, right? Um, oh, sorry. So that, that'll that definitely be one construction that we, that we have. Um, and then in, I guess we'll have to loop until, until our guesses match, right? And so we need some score within there. Bless you. Score within there. So I, I, I this is getting big enough here. I, I think I'm going to actually start by doing a flip. I'm going to flip just by thinking of the things I need to do a guessing game where I can play more than once. I, I'm going to need some some bookkeeping, right? Uh, um, so I need some score, and um, oh yeah, the, the random number that we have to guess, uh -huh. we'll need math.random, right? So we'll, we'll, we'll look at figuring ways around that. Sorry, boss texted something. Um, I'm gonna have to turn off this light to make some things visible. I think. All right, so I'm I'm going to have a guess that keeps repeating. So my outer loop. So I'm gonna start here, and I think the only thing I need to um, set first is I need the best score variable. All right, and um my scanner object. Right, those are the things I need to do before I, before I start a loop. Now, um, I, I want to do my loop. Um, see if I can see it here. Da, da, da. I want to run at least once, right? So I think we're going to use a construct called do while, because this will run once, and then it'll check. So you want to play the game once, right, before you say, hey, do we want to continue? Is that fair? Uh -huh. So I think I will begin my loop here with the guessing game itself. So in the guessing game, um, so I'm just going to pick a, a mark. This begins my main loop. Having some way of notating what you're planning on doing, I'm going to unleash you on this program, right? I, I'm looking at this. You have all the pieces that you can do to do this program right now, but they're probably going to fill your screen. So having an idea of the flow that you need might help you, right? So I don't know how you notate this or how you do it. Do it on the side. I'm a very big, big fan of flow charts for this. So, all right, so I'm going to go into my main loop, and the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get a random number. And I guess if I want to be nifty, right, I can make my program a little flexible. I can have the minimum number and the maximum number be variables. I don't have to. I come down here and say I'm going to do 0 to 100 or 1 to 100, right? But if I get bored of that, I you know, might change it from like 1,000 to 2,000. And there's things I can change in here. So I think I might make my min and max variables. But, but we'll, we'll see coming through here. So I generate my random number. And then I'm going to ask the user to guess. It's 
So in here, I guess I also need a counter for how many guesses, right? And um, I'm going to have my, my thing check, um, is the user equal, is the user less than, or is the user greater than? That's going to be my logic on my check. So if the user is equal, I'm going to, sit, I'm going to print correct, and I'm going to Fucking screens in the way. We win. Uh, well, we correct. Then, then um, I need to. Do you mind if I, I get rid of this just so we have room? We'll, we'll program over here. Uh, I'll, I'll fall here. Well, we've just reached the point where the things we're doing aren't small. Um, so I'll tr turn off the front. guys help me. So I'm going to ask you questions. You're going to talk. Because I'm, I, I, I'm going to start my program and I'm going to have some type of score and min and max. But we'll, we'll have best score. And the scanner. And the scanner. Thank you. And min max. Things we can set so we can make this game a, a different each time if we need to. But the user doesn't need to, to use it. All right, so we're going to come in and we're going to begin the main loop. And so, what do I have to keep track of while the user is trying to guess things? Random number. A, a random number. And what else? Number of guesses. Number of guesses. So I need to do that every time I enter this, these need reset. So if I play again, I need to reset the random number, I need to reset the number of cases. Is that okay? Alright. Um, so then I'm going to ask the user. To make a guess. And what should I do as soon as the user makes a guess? What just happened? We'll do that next. But what's the first thing that has changed as soon as the user has made a guess? The number of now, the number of attempts. Of the number of guesses. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't do that last time. That's why I kind of got pissed. I was running out of room. Uh, you ever ever do this when you're writing and you're running out of room? You try to make things fit. Yep. That's why I was like, fuck it. I just got to make this bigger. Right. We got a big idea here. So increase the number of guesses. Yep, it certainly happened. And then, and as Sophie said, now we figure out um, well, some type of comparison. Was it equal? Was it less than? Or greater than? Or was it greater than? All right. So if it was equal, great job. Is that a parallelogram or is that a rectangle? Parallelogram. Input outputs are parallelograms, setting things in memory are rectangles oh. in general. And my left handed handwriting is something. Uh, so, all right, so great job. And I guess we need to do. Um, and I know there was an actual difference behind yeah, the, the orange is looking different. What? That one looked right. Yeah, you got it. So I guess I should ask. Right? Great job. Do you want to play again? Right? We'll ask that all in one. And then in, if they say yes, uh, play again. Um, check input. If they say yes, we want to play again. However you do that, I think I'm going to use a menu system. But if they want to play again, we've got a menu. We go back to 
No. Uh, and, and that'll do it again. What do we have to do, though? I guess we want to check their score, right, before they play again, right? So if their current number, so we need to do a little, a weird little if in here before they play again. Let's see, if their number of guesses is less than score, then we really quickly, um, if that's true, score equals guesses. We reset score. Otherwise, we keep the score as is, right? Right? I came through previously, it took me 28 guesses. Simple underscore? If guess is greater than score, uh, this is, sorry, true. Yeah, it'll be like pi for a second. Yeah. yeah. It might have actually been pi, right? They have run out of coffee. The coffee machines are broken in the cafeteria. I've been teaching since 8 a.m. with only this sweet, horrible, uh, Swiss Miss like um, uh, cocoa cappuccino. I, I am like so caffeine done. I'm saying things and writing weird shit. Should it be less than? Um, if guess oh, is. Less than. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm agreeing with that. No, you're fine. This is this is good. This is this is what I want. I want you dissecting what we're doing, right? And, and how we're going to do it. So yeah, if it does end up equaling less than, we really quickly update the score. We flip them around. Otherwise, we keep what we have in here. All right, that's not too bad. And so that's our big loop there. All right, so we at least have one thing going through. Hey, we asked the user to go through. Hey, I got it. Um, do I want to play again? Update score. So we have one, one, one range of it. All right, if the, if the user um, is greater than, I'll print. Um, so we'll put greater than down here. Too, too large. Try again. Um, and over here, we'll say. Yes, yes, yes. Um, too small. Try again. Well, both of these doesn't matter if you're small or large. And so we come back to here. Uh, oh, and then if they say no, game ends. Print score. Print best score. Yeah. I used to play this in the car on the way to the beach, right? Yeah, you're bored and your grandparents want to shut you up. I'm thinking of a number between one and a thousand. I'm thinking of a number between 200 and 500. And, oh, you know, this, this, this. And, and at least you're not going like, can we stop? Can I pee? Can, and, and you're playing this. Well, really it's actually that. a complex thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right, let's try to get some of the pieces together. Sounds so simple. Well, I think maybe our definitions of simple are off. And when we have to make computers think, we have to realize there's a lot of incremental steps in the decisions we make. But I, I think what I want to try to do here is I want to get us to the main loop. I'm going to have you guys work on filling in the other loops. But we have time and we have rooms for questions. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. This is, this is messy stuff. Um, so I'm going to start with a new, new program. Good. New class. And I'm going to call it, what, guessing game? Too many G's in that, right? Guess a game. Yeah, three of them. All right. Now, um, Sansi, you'll help me if I make my weird typos or get my things backwards again today? Yeah. Good. I appreciate that. Um, first thing I have to do is import um, um, whatever you want. I called it guessing game. Um, right? Um, these names here, um, right, they're up to you. Um, I'm going to want to leave this up here for a bit. Is it okay if we use the side? That's going to be really the best I can do right now with that. Um, one more in the middle wouldn't be too bad. Uh, so what, what do I want to import? I want to import um, system.util.scanner. Java.util. Java.util, yeah. Where am I getting this system thing from? 
I, I haven't touched C sharp in a while. I've been doing a lot of C plus plus. They're all messed up. Is it C sharp that uses system dots a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Why does chapter five show up like it derives? I don't know what you mean. No, just the word chapter five phrase. Uh, that's what I used as my package for my chapter five stuff. You might yeah. be using an in class package or something. All right, so let's see here. I, I'm probably going to leave a, a lot of comments, so I, I'm going to talk about initializing things first, right? Because before I go into my loops, I need to get things initialized. So I'm going to initialize things here. God, now you have me remembering when I had to code um, geometries in C-sharp for the um, Center for Astrophysics at Harvard. It was one of my least favorite experiences because I went in and did someone else's code and all their way they did their weird math. Thank you for the flashback. <laughs> so initialize um, my um, variables. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a list. I'm going to have a best score, um, min value, and max value. Now I'm going to set my mins and max first. Now what type of variables should we use for these things? Should we be doubles, floats, integers, long? Yeah. Guess and doubles would be really weird, you know, 0 0.36285, I don't know. My grandparents never did that shit to me in the car ride. So, so I want to start with the min, because um, it's a, it, it, um, what do you mean underlined? It's a typo. It's a typo. It's not a real word. We're getting an error message. I'm not getting, oh, up here, now I'm not getting an error message. It's just saying it's not correctly spelled. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I can go into my ID and turn off spell checking on it. Um, it uh, I just, yeah, yeah Eclipse. We, I, we've gone through those menus to try to get the font sizes the same. There's just too many menus sometimes. I don't know if it's an actual error message. Um, so the actual error message is when things can't compile, you will get these red flags over here. Okay. Awesome. So you, you get um, spell checks, and you will also get some like, like code suggestions you can turn on. I know um, my LaTeX editor does the same thing, um, and it, it doesn't understand like 90% of the math terms I'm doing. So um, I'm going to do 1 to 100 to start out with, I think. Um, why did I call? I was speaking min, um, min val. And max val. I was speaking about min and max while typing, um, and that um, you know I'm going to be weird today. I'll do a thousand. Okay. okay. Now, if I'm guessing between one and a thousand, what's probably going to be the worst I can do? I want to keep track of the best score. When I start out, it can't be zero, right? Because it's already. Yeah, so we're going to say, worst case scenario, 1,000. If I take more than 1,000 guesses, right, something's wrong with me. So uh, um, any, anyone else think of a way we want to do the, the, the score? Like, I, I think that's not a bad thing to do, right, going with 1,000. Maybe we could have a check if you hit 1,000, if you hit the max guesses. I'm not going to do it now, but if you came in here to increase the number of guesses, you could guess going, hey, you're greater than 1,000. You should have went through every option by now, moron, right? Like a user prompt. But um, I think it's not a bad thing to just set the score to 1,000. If someone takes 3,000 to go, is it going to kill our program? All right. Maybe I'll Maybe make you guys. Maybe you can input an needs to arrive. Well, we're not saving any of this to memory. These, what's the nice thing about, about this is not much memory is going to change. We're not keeping track of every score. We're only keeping track of the best score. So it'll only be, hey, in and out of memory. So hopefully we won't kill anything. We'll see. I mean, I, I've been known to write stupid code. And I, I think that sets up everything but my scanner object, right? Anything else you can think we need to start with? <coughs> I, 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 uh, I, I keep calling it input. Anyone want to call it something else? OK, input works.
Yeah, it's, it's just, it's I just want to po want to point out it doesn't need to be called input. Uh, it doesn't. No, you can call that object anything you want. I think that's where I was getting system. I think I think I was getting system because later on I have to call it system dot in, and I think I was switching the two in my head. Damn objects with the weird system naming. Isn't this kind of repetitive? We kind of get the same things in the beginnings of all our programs right now. But I think I've got everything here, so I want to start my main loop. Now, because I want to start right away, I'm going to do a do while loop. So that means I start my loop and end it with my while statement. So I'm going to have to do my check down here. What did I do? Oh, I don't have anything in here. Ah, I guess I need a sentinel value, don't I? Right, because notice I, I have nothing to check if I'm going to come out of this. What do you think? You need a sentinel value, or do you think I can um, wing it? Well, I'm going to do what I did before when we did this. Um, I'll call it the play value, and it will be true. Boolean play equals true. You all right with that? Yeah. Any, any, any other way you want to do it? All right, so I kind of have this done and I have the in entry point and this point here. All right. If we look at the construction that I've done here, I've got everything I said for this thing to run, all those initialization things, and then I have my first main loop. Now there's two things we can do here. We can start working our way in. Um, yeah. So we're all right with a sentinel value. So this thing here, um, instead of being yes and no, check input and update sentinel, right? Remember when we talked about sentinel values? All right, well, that's the last one. I, 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 what? So a sentinel value is something that checks if we should be in or out of our loop. Um, and so in this case, we have this variable called play that's set to true. We will come into our loop, we'll run through once, and if we don't want to play, we change this to false. So that way, all it has to do is check that. That way, um, we, I'm worried about this number of guesses thing. It bugs me that I could go over a thousand. So I might, I might put a kill switch in it. If the number of guesses go over a thousand. You immediately set play to false. Right? There's some certain things we could do with sentinel values that we don't have to just always look at the endpoint on it. We can, you know, terminate things as coming across. But we have we have the structure for the first part of the loop. All right, so I guess now I need to make my um, random number. And um, do you remember how we 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 uh, mudged, pludged um, the random number before? So I have to set um, I guess my integer for the number of guesses, and right now they're starting off with zero. Does anyone remember if I use math random what it returns to me off the bat? Zero. Not quite. It can return zero. Zero is one of the options. Zero through nine. Not zero through nine. It returns a double value less than one. Yeah, it's gonna be zero through one, not including one. So it could be zero, it could be point nine 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 five. We have to somehow turn this into an integer. That's 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 been, been our been our problem. I 
Yeah. Is there another curly brace? I mean, the bottom curly brace. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's why I'm kind of doing the chunks together. I have yeah. Them, but I to make sure. No, and I, I've got when when we build loop structures, they'll build the beginning and ending brace. So I'm trying to leave space in them so that we don't have to worry about the beginnings and ends once we build them. All right, so um, um, I want an integer um, to be the um, secret number, right? And we're going to have to use math.random. Now, this is going to return a double. So that's the first problem I have here, is it's going to return a double. And th this right now is doing 0 point to add 0 0.99. I need to somehow get it to go between 1 and 1,000. Yes, that's the we, we can cast this as an integer. That's the one of the things we're going to have to do. So, but right now because it's zero to point nine nine, it's always going to return a zero. So we're going to need some way to before we cast this as an integer get pieces out of it. I, I know right away that I'm I'm probably going to need to play with some variables oh. beforehand. Um, we did we did this in, in a previous control. guessing game. Um, do, does anyone remember? How we changed it? We did math.random times 100 plus 1. And that, um, so that would, that would give me 1 to 99. You, times 1,000 plus 1? Um, well, yeah, pardon? Someone said something? No, I was like, oh, wow. So, ah. so there's definitely that idea of if I'm going to get, um, if I multiply this, by a thousand, right? I'm going to get. Oh, yeah, the plus one will take care of it. Yeah, yeah. So I need to figure out um, how much to multiply this by. Well, because I'm using min and max, um, what I have to do is make a thing called range. Because if I change my min and max, it's going to change um, what comes out of this. So my range is max value minus min value that's a minus sign because I can't type plus one that makes sense right that, that, that if we were talking about one to a hundred that's 99 numbers right but we, we need to kind of shift it by the one um, because uh, we wanted to make sure our zeros were there. Um, so I think I have enough now that we can do um, what we just said we were going to do. You, you said we, we multiplied it by 100. So in this case, we multiply it by the range. And then in, we added one, but what we were really adding was the minimum value. Does that do the same thing we did before? This is going to give me all of the numbers, and then I'll add the minimum value to it. I think that will do it. I don't know. We'll have to play with some other min and, val min and maxes. I think it'll work for what we have right now. Right? Because this is going to give me 999 times that 9.9. That'll, that'll get me up to let's see, nine, um, 999 plus 1. So it's going to give me 1,000. So 1,000 times math.random is going to give me from 0 to 999. Plus the minimum value that I'll give you one to a thousand. So I think this will work. I think this will work for everything we do. I don't know. It's something you, I know you're going to have to play with in your homework. Okay? But I think it's a good enough start for us right now. You all right with that? I think that's the weirdest math we'll have today. Minus <laughs> random plus min value. Okay. Uh, 
and that sh and that'll chomp off integers. All right. So I think we've we've done all here. So now I'm going to make a note that I'm coming into my inner loop. And so now I'm going to. Huh? Is that before the wild? Uh, 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 so where I'm typing right now, I'm inside the brackets for the do while, so I'm not before. And remember, I have two loops. I have a big loop, and I have a loop inside. And so since I'm inside my brackets here, that is going to be my inside loop. Does that kind of answer your question? Is where I'm typing... Um, well, if, if we want to, to look with Sophie's question, if we look at the brackets in the do, they contain the loop. So my loop will be in f f everything that's inside there. So this whole outer loop gets contained within these brackets. Now I'm going to do an inner loop in here that will be in other brackets inside. It. And so that should contain the do. I just I, I have to look at this weird thing here is we're going to ask the user to go through one guess. So this will loop until the user gets it right. We don't need to do anything but to check if they're right or wrong. Um, so this, do I need another sentinel? Yeah. Or, um, let's see, where do we end here? Um, is the user equal to, yeah, because I can't do this comparison at the end of the while loop, can I? Right? Did it, did you guys understanding what I'm asking? I'm going through the loop, and if I'm checking if the user is equal, less than, or greater, I can't use this text of my loop, can I? Because I have three options. Oh. Well, I definitely need a new loop, but how, how am I going to exit the loop? So I, I, I think I'm going to make another Boolean, and we're going to say that let's see, I have a number of guesses, I have range, I have the secret number. Uh, I'm going to say, are they correct? And that's going to be false right now. And I'm going to do another do while. Wait, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I, th I see. Do you remember when we did the the the? the Boolean test before and I used a not with my sentinel because it made good English to me. Why is that an exclamation um, that, That's what, what, what I'm talking about right now. Um, so the exclamation point is the Boolean operator that does the opposite of this. I'm writing my variable to be in good English for me. So when I'm reading this, I'm asking, did the user get it correct? No, they didn't. But my loop needs to repeat when this is false. Loops will only repeat when what's in here is true. So I'm using that Boolean operator. And this is what the, the previous one, the one we did in class, I had to go and I had it false, and I would go when not go was true. I, uh, I could fix this. I, I, I could say um, continue, and I could have continue equal true. And later on in the program, when the user got it right, I could set continue to false. And I wouldn't have to put the not here. Is that making sense on the, on the sentinel I'm choosing? But because I'm asking the question, is the user correct, I'm making this make sense in English so I can read my code. To do that, I need to take the opposite of whatever the value of correct is. Are you okay with that? You can do this either way. You can make this continue equals true. Down here, there's no not, it's continue. And when the user gets it correct, you will set continue to false. 
That's completely valid. All we're doing is flipping a switch, right? To make, make the program going. That's what a Boolean does. But I want it to be English readable. So I'm look, checking to see when the user is correct. And so I'm using the not here. All right, that. And I know. This is why I do things like this first, because once I start getting into the code here, and I think um, I might need to make some comments for that. So let's see. Um, this is the number the user is trying to guess. This is if the user guessed correct or not. And then in down here, I'm just going to say exit this loop when the user has guessed correctly. Comments are helpful, right? Yeah, you don't have to type everything I'm doing in here. I'm, I'm setting up a structure. In fact, I'm going to let you play in a second or two here because I think we have everything you need to finish this. I have a loop that will ask the user to keep going. I have something that picks a secret number. So in here, Um, prompt the user um, for a guess. Check if the guess is high, low, or correct. Display result. So there's code that's going to go in the middle there. All right. So prompt the user for a guess. So that's a system.print, right? And a, and a check the scanner, right? We'll, we'll, we'll put guess equals. Um, yeah, again, these are comments on what we need to code here. So let's see, this is a system.out.print line, right? Enter your guess. Check if the guess is high or low. Well, at some point here, we're going to integer guess equals um, input dot next in, right? The things we've done before, so I'm not going to you know, run through all of these. Right now, we're looking at the logic. And then in here, I'm going to have to do my if statements, right? I'm going to have to do if guess is less than um, secret number. Then I'm going to print out, hey, you guess too low. If guess is greater than secret number, hey, you guess too high. And if guess is equal to secret number, I'm going to set correct equal to true. So it exits the loop and tell them that they're true. I think that's doable for you. I think there's enough structure here, and you got about a half hour. Work on it. Okay? I'm going to play with it. I think there's enough there to get a working day. Okay, so just keep running the program, right? Keep writing it? Yeah. Running it, I mean. Well, it has to be written first. Right? Because we don't have any of the, the of this interaction here. Yeah. Um, so, really asking you to do the logic of checking the guesses and then updating the score. I think we have the loop structure to do that. So try it. See what you get. Uh, I'm going to work on mine slowly in the background now. Is that an okay start? Again, a lot of you, I get this, so it's hard to read yeah, your facial expressions. So thank you for nodding your heads. Yes, Ken? I got an error on mine. Uh oh. An error. Not an arrow, but an error. Let's see. One, two, wow. Wow. Uh, oh, let me um, scroll up. You type player instead of play. Oh. I got one. Oh. And then this one. Uh, we have an extra, let's see. Oh, go back. Uh, uh, I think that looks like Yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we got extras in there. Yeah. No problem, well done. <laughs> That's the last two. 
What's up? Is there something else I messed up here? Um, can you, can, correct cannot be, um, ah, there is, so correct is inside some extra bracing here. So Get because of this, um, because of these extra braces here outside of this do loop, um, correct is not within the right hierarchy. Oh my god, I did something wrong. So get rid of those two? Yep. And, yep, now you're in scope. Uh, I don't know how your rest of your braces are, but you're within scope. Yeah. Yep. What's up, Sophie? I did something bad. Oh, it's running forever? Yeah. Get the big red cat. Yep. Okay, amazing. Yep. So, you didn't update um, your correct. Or one of you. I was just trying to see what would happen if I just Oh, so you pray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not done yet. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's no pauses for inputs and no checks. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it'll run forever because it's always good. Well, it, it, that's what should happen. That's good. And that's what we do. That's what You should program in steps like that. So that's good. Okay. Right. Let's see. Anyone else have questions? Use your books, <laughs> right? Use your references. This is not a, an exam style thing of what can you do off the top of your head, right? Um, this, if, this, this here, I could do as nested if statements. I could do it as a case statement, right? There's more than one way to do some of these things. So I want you to find the ones you, that you think of when, you, when you're coding. Yes, Stephanie. Remember, there is this outer, outer loop. We go to the outside, and, and you say, hey, do you want to play again? So there will be a question once you're done. And definitely get the inner loop working first, right? And, and then once you get that inner, inner loop working for, first, um, you can ask the secondary question. I also want you to notice the way we... Outer loop. Yeah, yeah. The, the way we work this out on a whiteboard... Um, kind of I'm asking you questions to do it. More and more, that's what a work environment is on some of these things. A lot of times, you don't sit down with a computer. We go, we need this thing to do this. Well, what does it, does it need to do? And notice how sometimes they say, oh, yeah, I, I should do it. You go back. Get a lot of what your programs are going to do before you start coding them. We're on the cusp now where things are getting large enough that it's some, sometimes easier to pre-plan easier to figure out, oh yeah, I needed a, um, a um, number of guesses, I needed my range that variable in here, right? I needed to create a temporary range variable. It's easier to do that ahead of time.
trying to figure out. And every time I do, I have like five versions of this because I kind of start it kind of loosey goosey and see how we go. And I'm trying to, I did the loops, I did do wows this time, I did wows the first time I did this with the class. I like changing it up for me. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do it. Sorry, you cannot say no when, when a colleague is giving you jerky. What's up, Jerry? Yeah, so you, you, you had your... Uh, oh, she was asking what I was going to do. Ah, yeah, sorry, I can't say no when a colleague was offering me jerky. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. So what I'm doing right here is I'm putting an integer and getting the input from the user. So you have to do something like that. Okay. Does Any that other? Like the statement? I just did the 
Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and, and we'll, we'll get used to that. Anyone else see anything? Okay, here and here. Which loop is this? So, so it will run once, and then at the bottom, it will figure out the So, it will take the different number. So, you've done it. This will this will this will run um and then once the gets put can go back and now outside of this one maybe or So what's happening is this blue one out here, this blue to this ending is a loop. And instead of checking the it starts, I'm just checking it. And by updating your center you know, we, so, so we write it, it's the same thing, we just put it in a different place. So it's always going to run at least one step. And then so now, now when you exit it, you hey, you want to play again, update the screen as last step. Um, no, the, I, those are definitely just... Oh, oh, those two. Okay, I didn't see that one. Yeah, you were trying to make a wild loop at the end of everything. Yeah. yeah. And there you go. All right. So um, what you want to do is try to update the score. Try to open it.
was a pigeon. Pigeon right there. Making to go into yeah, 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 so, yeah, so, yeah, so. And the fact that I have to, this is my first class back, and you sent me to the Trying to run a giant program. Yeah, I hear you. What I'm going to do here is I, I, I want to have more time with this. We've got 10 minutes here. Um, we're going to say that we're going to continue this on Tuesday. So we, if you're happy okay. with it, you can clean it up um, over the weekend. But we're going to keep working on this Tuesday. Where everyone's at, everyone's kind of got the middle loop scoping together okay. It's um, the kind of the score in the outer loop we're starting to get some questions on. And I think this is good. I think this is a good way of developing some things. So if you want to work on it between now and, and Tuesday, but we will come back and start with this on Tuesday. We still have 10 minutes, I'm going to get around to questions, but I don't want people who are doing this freaking out that they have 10 minutes and they need to get it done. So that's why I want to say that right now. We have a question here. You are. So we want to be able to get the correct number of numbers. Yep, so, no, you're in the right place. So you have to just scroll. Uh, <laughs> we'll go down in the code up. Right, it's good to go. No, you're in the right place. So right when you get correct, this exits the user is correct. So between here and the keep playing, you need to ask them. And so you turn keep playing to false book. Um, which that should end at that point in time. Um, how are you checking it? Are you using two rows? If these are two rows, it's not. Then you checking in no enter and it just wasn't taking
So this is creating your sense here. Format strings. Um, two seconds. So. Something small, right? We're, we're, we're looking at something small because it is at one point.
I'm so sorry. I should have seen that. So we can it here. Let's see. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's not Professor, take care of
things here. question up here while I'm printing something, and my apologies for the back and forth. That was a really weird error on, on, on that previous one. Oh, let's start here and go over, okay, across while I tried to print this. You have a question, my friend? Not anymore. Aww. I made a, I was like, oh, this looks good, and then I made a problem for myself. So. I, that is exactly what all this is about, and we'll keep working on it. What's up? equals you will turn correct to true. So in that one little that first if when they're correct oh, you change okay. it to true. That that'll have have the okay, so it's not secret number equals guess? In that first parenthesis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Equal equal guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, in the parentheses no 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 no. So your parentheses uh, you have if it's equal, do something, right? Yeah. And you print it's correct. But now you need to tell memory it's correct too. So underneath that print line, you need to also do this. Oh, that's another is or if else one. Oh, hold on. I'm really re abbreviating this print statement, right? Yeah. Inside these brackets for this if statement, you update them. It's part of what happens when it's right. Still not understanding why it's looping the way it is, but that's one one thing to check. All right, uh, Jackson, let me get this here for you. I 
like how you're halving. Now it's going to be uh, really weird, right? Too high? Yeah, I said yeah. Two, 250, maybe? 225, maybe? Or 125, maybe? Um, 62, somewhere like that. Too low, so 48. Oh, no. So you know, it has to be 49. And then shut to like, yeah, I, have, I just have it set to, if you put anything other than one, it just ends. You know? Oh, yeah, fix that. Fix <laughs> that's that. Why said, fix that. That's why I fix said that. Okay. Easy way to now I understand what you mean. Yeah, that is cheesy. Fix that. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than that, it seems to work correctly, right? It's, you did exactly what we asked. Okay. Yes. Okay, what's up, my friend? Is that still doing a weird move? Uh, yeah, it's something I'm going to say. I'm going to get rid of something. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you shove something in there and it gives you a map. That's interesting. No, not that. I didn't shove anything in that yet. I said, how much? This is. Is that what you need, Jackson? Yep. All right, have a good one, my friend. No bugs, no bugs. Just put it outside. We're going we're gonna to peek. Right, we're going to cheat so that we can cut the we can test the thing. Yeah, so you want to type in secret number, so it's going to show us what the secret number is. So this is going to have a print line. Secret Just the very You're worrying too much instead of just trying to be sound with it. We'll try to get you back to zone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So it's working. You're in your loop. If you get it right, it, it, it will um, um, go through. So you don't want to ask to play again. So you're going to keep guessing until you get it right. So I would get rid of the yeah. Got it. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So your loops are in the right place. So your inner loop is working fine. Yeah. You just need to, um, um, and you are definitely modeling when it's correct. So your inner loop's good. Can I just get rid of it all? Yeah. Because This is exiting fine down here. So now you need to ask them, hey, do you want to keep playing? And then I'll take the best score. And all that stuff. That's why I said we were, we were going to continue this on Tuesday. Okay. Everyone I is about want, in I this place. I just to make sure. No, 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 no you're good. I'm going to run it one more time so it saves. Yep. Um, every, everyone was about in the same place as you are right now. Yeah. The inner loop's good. They're kind of working on the second loop. Yeah. And that's fine. That's fine. I, I meant this to be hard, and I meant it for this to have struggles. I'm just glad I was able to do that bit pretty much. 
by myself. I had like a couple questions, but for Something, the most part, you I was are it overly right. anxious on what you were doing good. I feel bad that I'm asking so many questions. Do not do that, please. I, like, it's better than the people that stare at me when I'm going, do you get this, do you get this? I don't like, and they stare, I hate awkward silence, so I always try and say good, something. Good, and, and that's what I appreciate. I appreciate that, so don't apologize for it. I've always been the person to try and sit in the front of the class and engage, like, ever since I started school. I was just, like, talking to people. I'm kidding. I also love them. No, I, and I just need you to recognize that this is not smooth learning. You have to try some things. Yeah. If they don't work, try some other things, right? Yeah. And I think you are good at that. I think it's a little bit weirder when we're all here in coding versus yeah. when you're on your own in coding. But I want, want to make the two work together for you, okay?